you for being here for one of our live shows. It's a live show. It's yeah. amazing. Have amazing you ever, concept. Have you ever considered doing your show live? <laughs> I was joking backstage. I was like, this is a big deal, live. Yeah. We do this every night. Yeah, you do it every single night. <laughs> every single night, you turn it around really fast. Tonight was... Uh, a little strange for you because you were doing your show during the first hour of the debate. This, it's so weird that we've had this two nights in a row. I mean, the first uh, the first time we had the debates on MSNBC. Oh, right. right. So these ones we did not have. They're only on CNN. They're only on the network that gets them. And you're in this sort of, you're in the segment meeting. It's like, should we not mention the debate? Because maybe on the off chance we remind someone it's happening and they turn over there. <laughs> yeah. It's well, like, it's that's kind of dumb. They know. Because I feel like the people who watch your show are obviously invested in politics. So it seems like a very small slice of people that would be, like, invested in politics but also not care about the debates. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. Um, I, I like to think of the people invested in politics invested in me. Yeah, that's true. They want to see... Which is a small number as the rating <laughs> showed. <laughs> but, uh... You, you so, but obviously you uh, managed to go back. You you watched the debate a lot about healthcare tonight. Um, yes. Uh, substantive, I think. Sometimes I would imagine for uh, most people a little hard to follow. Do you feel like the candidates do a good job laying out what their differences are? You know, in regards to healthcare. I thought the first night was actually sharper on on this because the the access was very clear. It was two people advocating Medicare for all, single payer. Everyone enrolls in one plan. There will be no private plans anymore. We'll transition that. And then other people attacking that. And I actually think Medicare for all, whatever you think about its popularity or workability, it is at least, it is clear yes. what it is, right? So people can say, well, how are you going to pay for it? And I don't know if I want to give up my private health insurance. But the sort of lines of debate were clear. Tonight, with these more kind of like half measures about the public option, you'll have a $1,000 deductible and 8.6% of your income. But not if you're, you know, that gets way, way, way harder to follow. And then it becomes a bit, I feel as though the takeaway is who's making the most effective attack on someone else. Tonight definitely seemed like a night of uh, attacking. Uh, Joe Biden is obviously the front runner. He's going to take those attacks. It seemed like last night they were making uh, Delaney the stand-in for Joe Biden because yes. he, was, he was sort of the moderate who was there. It's and so despite funny. polling at 1%, he sort of had a starring role. It was really funny because obviously the thing that we haven't seen yet is you want to see a stage that has Harris, Buttigieg, Biden, Warren, and Sanders together. Those are the people who are polling in the top five. And we haven't had that. So last night, I think what CNN tried to do, and it's not a crazy approach to this, is they were like, let's just make someone a Biden stand-in. Yeah. Because we don't have Biden here. <laughs> yeah. And they were like, Del who's the guy at the end? Delaney. Yeah. Let's do him. Yeah. He was like uh, Brad Pitt to Leonardo in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah. I haven't seen him yet. <laughs> It's a stuntman joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot of people have. <laughs> um, and then I want to ask about the issue of electability. Obviously, this is a question that's coming out right now. And one thing that people ask is, is this good for people to be attacking everyone? Does that weaken a candidate when they go to the general election? You could argue, certainly, uh, in the last election, Hillary Clinton didn't have to go through uh, this sort of a trial by a bunch of candidates, maybe a little bit with Bernie, but it yeah. certainly wasn't this. Not this. Do you feel like it's good or bad for uh, whoever emerges from this to have been sort of attacked by, uh, at one point, you know, 22 different other candidates? You know, I don't really know that I know the answer to that. I mean, in some ways, it's unavoidable. So what... Who's to say what, what, whether it's good or bad? It's going to happen. I mean, you know, politics is about conflict. And I think that what I would say about the first four debates in the Democratic Party is they have been substantive. Like, people do disagree about whether we should have single-payer system or not. There are arguments on both sides there, that are not, like, you know, trivial. There are real arguments on both sides. And those need to be hashed out. People disagree about whether we should decriminalize unauthorized entry to the United States, which is currently a criminal misdemeanor, but could be handled as a civil matter. There are people on different sides of that. It's good to fight about that stuff. Like, it's good to fight about that stuff, and it is inevitable to fight about that stuff.